Today's project is a self watering plant pot. I love having plants at home, but I often forget to water them. When I found the plants dropping, I felt guilty for not taking care of them well. So I made self watering pots for them. I use 1.5 kg of stoneware clay on the full size wheel bat. I make a cone to center the clay. The wheel's speed is adjusted by the clay's density. Soft clay is easy to manipulate even at high speeds, while harder clay requires lower speeds. The negotiation with centrifugal force is crucial. I secure my arms on the wheel pan to create a strong counter force to the spinning clay. Then I adjust the wheel speed to the maximum point where my left hand can stay calm. The cone-shaped process also equalizes the clay density. When the clay stabilizes under my hands, it's ready to begin shaping. I'm going to make a flat base for this pot. My right hand edge compresses the top at the 5 o'clock position and my left hand maintains the side. I aim for over a 15 cm base, sufficient with my hand plus 4 fingers measuring 16 cm. I make a center hole with my right middle finger and my left finger as a support to give extra pressure. I position my right middle finger slightly off center, sliding down towards the center to avoid being dragged by the clay force when approaching directly. I want to leave the bottom thickness at 7 mm. Then my right middle finger tip slides outwards to enlarge the hole. When the finger tip reaches the wall, dig the wall slightly, then bring that clay up. The bottom thickness is about 1 cm at the moment. Compress with a wooden rib to make a flat and dense base, preventing an S-crack. This also makes the thickness down to 7 mm. Now I repeat the same action until the wall becomes 3 cm thick. The climb up clay on the top need to be compressed from three directions to keep a firm edge. It's ready to pull the wall up. My right ring finger compresses the bottom of the cylinder at the 9 o'clock position. And my right middle and index fingers are aligned vertically on top. My both thumbs are interlocked to keep two hands in one tool. This small gesture is important for steady throwing. I maintain this hand shape and slowly bring it up. The edge needs to be compressed from three directions to maintain a firm rim. 
Now I switch one side to the wooden rib from my fingers for a thinner equal thickness wall. It's still good practice to keep two hands together, so my left thumb is connected to the wooden rib. This time from the inside. I use this handmade wooden bar to compress the corner nicely. After compressing the bottom corner, I press the bar edge against the clay. My left hand is positioned at 6 o'clock. I flip my left hand to hold the cylinder and my left index finger applies pressure to the wooden bar. The cylinder is about 20 cm high and the wall is about 6 mm. I want to make a slightly buried pot so I mark the middle line and push this pot out from inside. My right arm is supported by my left hand. As the working point gets higher, my arm becomes more unstable. So I need to establish a new anchoring point for my right arm. Clean the surface and do a final check of the shape using the large mirror in front of the wheel. I use chamois leather to compress the edge. This creates a clean, strong edge. I trim the bottom for a clean finish. This makes top centering easier later. The clean circle is essential for top centering. I separate the pot from the bat with a fishing string. Dry the pot overnight for the next step. The pot is dried slightly harder than usual because I'm going to cut the pot and add extra parts. I want to keep the original circle to fit two parts well. Checking the bottom thickness to assess how much I can trim. After tap centering, secure the pot with three pieces of clay. This metal disc has a bearing in the middle. The top disc stays under my finger while the under disc spins with the pot. It's a finger friendly tool that you can buy online. I use a metal trimming tool as the pot is harder than my usual. The main body is not necessary to trim for this pot. I'm trimming the bottom corner at an angle and removing some clay from the lower part of the pot. Then I trim the concealed foot ring. I trim the center hole for my finger rest. Then mark one centimeter inside from the edge. Clean the foot ring surface.
Now I start to trim circles first. Then trim the peaks. This is a useful method to avoid making waves on the large trimming surface. Now I'm going to separate the pot. I use the needle to separate the pot. Knives can easily catch the clay and go off in the wrong direction. But the needle stays in the track under my finger. The pot is nicely separated. Clean the edge for the next step. I'm going to add the bottom to the top part of the pot, making a slab sheet. The sidebar's thickness is 1 cm. I roll the pin. Then change the clay direction to even distress the clay. Lift up the clay to release it from the canvas, otherwise the clay sticks and it wouldn't stretch completely. Make the surface smooth from the outside to the center. I aim to create a tight clay sheet. Flip over the clay. Then repeat the same process on the other side of the seat. I press the top pot on the slab sheet. Cut the sheet along with the pot. I'm going to join two pieces together using a toothbrush to make a scratch mark at the joint part and add extra soft clay. I have a very soft clay made from this pot's clay, which helps to make two parts of clay's moisture closer. It isn't a glue, so I have to give a pressure to join the two parts. I use a toothbrush rather than a needle. The toothbrush is making a velcro effect. Both side surface grab the other side well. Apply the same process to the pot as well. 
Now, join the two parts together. Once the position is confirmed, I push the pot against the base with a small twist action. This soft clay is not a glue. It just helps to join two parts together. This pressure ensures a well-made joint. I prepare clay coil to add extra strength at the joint. Apply the soft clay to the inside joint part and gently fill the corner with this coil. Cut the doubled coil with a needle and remove any extra clay. The coil can be smoothed with a finger on a wheel easier. Now both parts have bottoms. I'm going to trim the top bottom corner to fit them together. After centering, secure the pot with three pieces of clay. Then trim the corner straight down to fit with the bottom half of the pot. This fit should be as tight as possible because the newly added bottom of the top pot tend to pull the joint edge inward. As a result, you will notice significant difference in size between the fitting parts at the bone dry stage. The bottom part needs an air vent. Using a round cutter, I make a half round shape. The edge is easy to break, so use the metal kidney to cut the edge. Then take extra care to make the hole nice and smooth. The top pot needs a hole in the middle through which a rope is threaded. Then I make small holes for air circulation in the soil. I cover the set well with a plastic sheet and dry them slowly to prevent the joint cracks. I'm going to fire two parts together. I work the joint part well, so there is no graze at the joint. The graze should be non-running. After the graze firing, I need to thread the rope through the hole so it can absorb water for the plant pot above. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching this pottery process. Feel free to try it yourself and explore different shapes and variations. Happy creating and I'll see you in the next pottery video. Mm -hmm.